Okay, my name is Wojciech Pazdur, and uh, I'm designer of GetEven project. However, I see right now that this subtitle lead designer is taken from the last year's presentation. And right now, actually, the design of GetEven is being split into several different persons. And I would not call myself right now the lead designer of the game at this moment when we are doing the full production. However, regarding the scope of the game, the structure of the game, the original idea of the game, I was the, let's say, source of the, uh, of the shape of it. So again, moving back last, last year, we have been uh, talking about the technology behind GetEven. Right now, we will discuss the design and especially the conflict that is the K point of the whole GetEven structure looking from the design perspective. So for the beginning, let's see a short teaser. Okay, so obviously we are missing the date right now, but uh, talking about the teaser itself, uh, what was the most important thing is the teaser was actually the last scene, the scene where you have seen the two guys. One of them looked like the typical video game character, like he was handsome, white man wearing the black jacket and having a pistol. And the second one, was sitting in the wheelchair and he was attached to some strange machinery and looking on some different uh, matrix-like monitors. And this is the thing that is the most essential in the Get Even. The Get Even is the story of the conflict of two persons. But why uh, we should bother at all about the conflict and why is it so important in Get Even? So first of all, we wanted to make Get Even a great story. And as you see here, uh, if you will take any storytelling handbook, like storytelling for beginners of Hollywood script writing guide for the newbies, at the first page, or at least in the first chapter, you will see that storytelling is all about the conflict. Because without the conflict, there is no drama, and drama is also the conflict. So uh, it's nothing new. Basically, uh, talking that we have conflict in Get Even is talking that we have story in Get Even. But why we wanted to uh, discuss the conflict is because in Get Even, uh, the structuring of conflict, the mixing of conflict in the storytelling and in the gameplay is something was was the key of uh, building the whole game design. So, what kind of conflicts we may have in the storytelling? There you can find uh, different, I would say, separations. There can be more or less just like four types of conflicts. I put here eight types of conflict, depending on, again, on what kind of storytelling books you will take, you will see different kinds of conflicts. 
So first is intrapersonal conflict. That means that hero of the story is conflicted with himself. Let's imagine the, let's say, romantic poems that you have been taught in the primary or medium school. This is basically what could be intrapersonal conflict. Of course, it can be more cool or it can be more deep or it can be more interesting than then. However, intrapersonal conflict is when somebody is fighting with himself. The interpersonal conflict, it's probably uh, more obvious. It's when one people is against other people in some way. It doesn't mean interpersonal in the way like we call interpersonal in different kind of social relation. It just means that it is between different persons. Conflict with authorities means that hero may fight against the government. Conflict with criminals may mean that there are some bad guys that want to do something bad to our hero. International conflict means for example, warfare, but also the espionage activities. Conflict with nature means that hero is fighting against the forces of nature, like, for example, the cataclysm. Conflict with machine may mean not necessarily the story of Terminator. It may mean also that somebody has problem with some tools that he has to use against something. Again, this can be another kind of conflict. And the last one, but probably not the last that could be simply defined, is the conflict with the supernatural, meaning the UFOs, zombies, uh, elves, gnomes, whatever else we may take. So get even is not definitely all about all of these conflicts. That's important because uh, to create something strong, you need to focus on something. That's probably simple. There are many games that could be called epic. For example, if you look at well, let's say, modern subject, which are free. In which are free, you probably have intrapersonal, interpersonal, nature, authorities, warfare, maybe even machine, and supernatural definitely. You got all kinds of conflicts in The Witcher because The Witcher is a very huge game, and The Witcher is not about the intimacy that we would like to achieve in Get Even. Get Even was supposed to be the conflict of two personalities, meaning that we have focused exactly on two types of conflict, the intrapersonal conflict and interpersonal conflict. And moving forward, Get Even is also an action game. What will be important? Because we wanted to tell the story about the conflict, but the story about the conflict, no matter if it's interpersonal or intrapersonal, could be told via movie or via book or via any other medium. But we wanted to use the video game as the medium, and if you look at what kind of video games genres you have, you may see that obviously action games are mostly about the conflict. If you see here, uh, this is just uh, we random web page of the Google when you put the action game image search, you will see a lot of pictures. Every picture is related to some kind of conflict. You are not writing the conflict games here. You are writing action game. And action is also in 90, 90.9% .9 of uh, cases related to the conflict, not necessarily in the games you see on the left and on the bottom, like modern uh, shooters, modern third-person action games. If you look on the right side, when there is a Pong, Pong is actually also about the conflict. Pong doesn't have any story, but there is a conflict. Not storytelling conflict, but there is a conflict, and this is important that in our opinion, the action uh, game was the best uh, medium to tell the story, not about the conflict of, let's say, nations or humans versus zombies or, or whatever epic scale conflict can be. For the intimate conflict, action game, we believe, is also good because element of fight increase the tensions and increase the engagement. And I will try to tell a little bit more about this in a moment, but if you, uh, see at the any kind of the old school games, for example, Space Invaders. Space Invaders, Space Invaders is also about the conflict, the supernatural conflict perhaps, or the conflict with the machines, depending on how we interpret the aliens. But it's important that even Space Invaders, and I guess uh, Adrian Schmielasch raised it yesterday on his lecture, that 
even then, there is an element of the story about the conflict, because the game is about shooting the pixels at pixels. But the story and the title of the game, like Space War or Space Invaders or whatever it is, tells you the story that there are the aliens and there is a conflict with the aliens. So, since the very, very beginning, uh, and this is the point here, the action games was always telling the stories of the conflicts, even if it was a Pong. And right now, moving to the get even, uh, this, let's say, screen on the right is not very clear. It's taken from the, uh, from the teaser, but there are two very important uh, elements of the story conflict in get even. It's interpersonal and intrapersonal conflicts. And there is also a gameplay conflict that we want to mix together with them. And the, we want to use the synergy between these three different kinds of the conflict to create something like the game that tells you about the story. Basically, get even title. Looking again at the title, case I mentioned before, is get even mean, means to take the revenge or to settle the score, uh, settle the score. Meaning, get into the conflict with somebody, find against somebody. And this is uh, this, the logo structure, like this opposite E letters, Somebody says that they are too similar to the EVE Online. <laughs> it's just accident. We didn't read the EVE Online logo. But these opposite E letters are also something about this symbolism. But uh, funny fact is that originally Get Even was supposed to be called Get Ivan. Ivan like Russian Ivan. However, we have changed it a little bit because it appeared that finally game is not about the Ivan, but it's about some other characters. So this is why it's Get Even right now. And uh, moving a little bit deeper, the posters you see here, both poster from the Butterfly Effect movie and from the Old Boy movie, are very significant because uh, the Butterfly Effect and the Old Boy was the key source of the reference of how we wanted to tell about the narration, about the structure of the world, how we want to present the heroes. First was the Butterfly Effect. Butterfly FX has some very cool, I would say, uh, gamey, fe gamey feature, something that could be, uh, let's say, taken directly from the game, like ability to replay when you do something wrong. I guess most of you know the Butterfly FX movie. The Butterfly FX movie was uh, the story about the guy who was able to dig into his own memories and try to change the past by digging into his own memories. So in case he did something wrong, he could read his memoirs, and by reading his memoirs, he entered the moment before he did something wrong, and he could try to change something. Think about this, that this is exactly the mechanism that we are all the time using in the video games. When the player does something badly, he has option to respawn, to replay the level, to reload the whole game, and so on. This is exactly the feature that connects the, this kind of the story with general gaming mechanism. And he wanted to do something uh, like Get Even is not the game uh, that m has gaming uh, mechanics fighting with the story mechanics. Because in the typical story, ability to replay the event if it's gone wrong makes no sense. When something happens in the story, it happens in the story. Ability to replay the movie and change the facts is the element of the game. So we wanted to not make like we got a story, and then we have artificial element of replaying the game. We are trying to figure out that we could connect it together. Like we can have the story about ability to change the past, which, makes, uh, which gives us some justification to the case that when player did something bad, he can rewind the past at some very short uh, periods of time. Like when he dies, he replays the battle arena. When he did something wrong in the bigger story context, he can replay the whole chapter. When he did something wrong with his whole life, he can restart his life. This all is somehow present in the Get Even story, and uh, we believe it, it makes uh, Get Even a little bit different from other games because it's not just a mechanism. So we wanted to use some kind of intrapersonal conflict because in Butterfly FX, the intrapersonal conflict m meant directly that hero of the movie was unhappy of what he did, what he did with his life. He did a lot of bad things or he caused some suffering to other people. 
and he wanted to change it. It was his intrapersonal conflict. So he was fighting with himself in the way that he was turning back into the past, he was changing it, but then everything gone wrong again in the other way, so he was replaying and replaying. The same as, as in the video game. So this is why we put this kind of intrapersonal conflict in get event. And the problem is that uh, it doesn't work for the gameplay because it, it does work only for, let's say, the failure scenario. If you do something bad, then you can replay it and change it for something better, or you can try to replay it for something better. But if you think more carefully, it's very hard to imagine the cool gameplay mechanics, the engaging gameplay mechanics about fighting with yourself. I mean, I, I, we didn't find a good way of how main hero should fight with himself, besides of making suicide or uh, doing some Emos cars on heads or, or, or whatever. It didn't work uh, even on the concept phase, so uh, fortunately uh, appeared some other idea that was taken from the movie Old Boy, because the movie Old Boy was exactly about the interpersonal conflict, so strongly that there were only two persons in the movie. Of course, uh, technically speaking, there were more characters in the movie, and also in Get Even, there is more than two characters looking from the, let's say, technical point of view. But from the importance of the story, there are just two, two characters, and they are very different. They have some extreme and ultimate rage and hate between them, and they are conflicting on different level. They are not just, or maybe not even fighting directly, like they are not coming into the bar fight or shooting fight. They are fighting by trying to destroy his life. They are trying to, uh, by attempt to uh, hurt the other one in the very, very bad way. So that, that was the, the ultimate conflict that we try to combine together with the intrapersonal conflict of uh, story similar to the butterfly effect or to Inception or to, to source code movies. So, of course, there is also a gameplay conflict because, as mentioned before, action game is, uh, let's say, natively about the conflict. In the action game, especially in the shooting game or combat game, because Get Even is not just about the shooting, but about different kind of combat. In the combat game, you have always some sides that are fighting each other. And we wanted to make this uh, conflict an intimate conflict, not the conflict of you got one squad of commando mercenaries, you got second squad of commando mercenaries, and there will be the winning or losing scenario. No, there are still two guys. Technically, again, there are more characters, there are, there are more emphasis in the game. But all the uh, fighting mechanics are focusing on emphasizing the conflict of these two characters. I will try to explain how. But first, let's focus on the intrapersonal conflict. So in the story, we got several questions that are being raised and that are let's say, connected to the whole game by the all time. This question is, what if I can change my past? This is actually the main uh, core fantasy of the game. This is where it all started. Because at the origin uh, of the Get Even, we wanted to create the intimate experience, meaning this is not the social game. This is not the game where you will be asking your friends, come on, let's, let's go play Get Even. Okay. Technically, again, you can ask your friend to play on the other sides of Get Even Conflict, but basically this is not conflict of you and your friend. You can use the game in this way, but because it has online uh, component, but looking deeper, Get Even is about something that, you, well, that we would like you to, uh, let's say, experience intimately by yourself. And the core fantasy of the game is, what if I can change my past? Why is that? Uh, that's the good question. Uh, the target, and, and uh, here we go a little bit into the marketing, but I think I owe you this because later on it could appear that uh, we are unfair why we are doing things like this. Among others, besides of looking at what was the experience of the game, like Butterfly Effect movie, like the Inception, like the Matrix, the Source Code, the Old Boy, it was the question, who will be playing the game? Because it should be the question when you plan to start game development, even if it was a long time ago, you should always ask the question, who are going to play your game? And because we wanted to create the first-person action experience, it appeared that 
okay, this game is looking kind of realistic, even ultra realistic. So for the realistic games, you got Call of Duty, you got Battlefield, and a couple of other titles. Should we compete with Battlefield and Call of Duty just by adding here deeper story? That's, uh, that's not gonna work. We couldn't have this production and this marketing budget. So who is going to play Battlefield and who is not going to play Get Even or the other way around? And there are the, let's say, market research who tells that for the Battlefield and for the Call of Duty, the most active players are the players who are at the teenagers and players between 12, uh, 20 and 30 years old, meaning mostly uh, high school uh, guys, meaning mostly students, and couple of years after the students, people are very actively playing. Uh, no, it doesn't mean that older or younger people are not playing the Call of Duty or Battlefield. It means that by average, the most interested in the epic stories, in the conflicts of the warfare and so on, there are people who are uh, between 15 and 25, and a little bit older. And who should be our target then? We cannot address uh, the serious and uh, dark action game to younger people than 15 years, because it would be problematic to find a proper niche. So we should address it a little bit to, uh, to, to the people who are a little bit older, meaning the people after 30. Again, it doesn't mean that people who are younger than 30 years cannot play Get Even. It just means that we wanted to touch the subjects that are especially interesting for, for people who are a little bit mature in inside, meaning not that they finished 18 years, but meaning that they don't really believe into the, uh, let's say, threat of the global conflict with the aliens or with the UFOs. They are threatened by different things, like, for example, loss of her family, loss of, loss of her job, being caught into the situation without the exit. And, and what if I can change my past is the question that is mostly raised by the people who are after 30, it's sometimes called the middle age crisis, meaning that when you are 20, you are usually thinking, this is the whole life ahead of me. But when you are 30 or 35, you start to think, well, I could go to the other studies. I could find another wife. I could not go to work into the game development industry, but do something other at Be Rich. That, that, that's the things that we start to tell ourselves when, when we are a little bit older. And this is also the core fantasy that we are being rising in the game. Of course, we are not making the game about the guy who is in the middle age crisis and, and, and he is regretting his job. This is not like this because then it won't be too attractive. But this is also the important question that we want to uh, push as the element of connecting the intrapersonal conflict of the hero of the games with the conflict, interpersonal conflict that we can have inside ourselves if, if we are not very young and if we have the, let's say, uh, tenden tendency to look back into our life. The second question, what is real? is more related, let's say, though, to the Matrix style of experience, like, okay, all the time in the game we are messing with realities. Players are moving from one reality to the second reality. They are being drugged. They are being uh, brainwashed. They are being mutilated uh, with help of some chemical substances and virtual realities. Long story how it works, but generally, all the time there, there is asked the question, what is real? What also means that it's kind of intrapersonal conflict because you wake up in some hostile environment and you ask yourself, okay, am I dreaming on AI or am I am in the real world? Or maybe I am, I am in the virtual reality? These are the questions raised by the game and a couple of times we want players to not know what's going on about this. Again, next uh, element of intrapersonal conflict is story is asking yourself, Am I evil? Because we didn't want to create a black-white scenario. Uh, technically, heroes are being codenamed like black and red, but it doesn't mean that black is bad, because it would be, you know, racist. 
uh, and the red is good because it would be uh, propagation of communion. So, so we, ca we could not use this symbolism. We just use the code name black and red because it's related to some things into the game. But what's important that every hero is supposed to be shown from different perspectives because we got two story campaigns and in which campaign we are playing as the one hero, one hero and we are seeing the other hero as our opponent also on the story level. So it means that in one uh, story, on in one campaign, we can feel as we are good and the other one is bad and other way around. But also we wanted to not create this that I'm playing this campaign, so the, o the other one is bad, and then it's all turning back, and right now I'm good and this is bad. We wanted to raise the question, am I evil, but showing both the moral choices to sh by showing the, uh, let's say, uh, shades of the gray for everybody uh, who is involved into this conflict. Like when you are playing one campaign, you see both good and bad things you did in the past and you have ability to change some of them, and this is what the game is all about. And how far will I go is the question because uh, there are some choices in the game that you may make to decide, am I doing this or am I doing this? And sometimes it may feel clear that, okay, this will be a good option, this will be a bad option. But the ultimate uh, goal we wanted to achieve is that when you finish the game, in one campaign, and when you, for example, kill or save the other guy. I won't tell you what will be the endings, because there will be a couple of endings, and uh, it doesn't matter right now what exactly it will be. But when you decide to keep somebody alive or to kill him, we want you to live with this uh, decision, not just to tell you by the, let's say, output of the story, okay, you did a good thing, you killed the bad guy. Maybe it will be good, maybe it will be bad. You will be able to answer it by yourself because you will have the another campaign when it will be all different and you will see it from completely different perspective. But to support this, let's say, story, uh, this, uh, story element, we also needed the gameplay mechanics that are, let's say, uh, symmetrical to it or that are connected uh, to it in the way that we can use them to support all these elements. So first, we got something like time loops. If you, you've seen the butterfly effect <coughs> movie, then you may realize that it's something more than just ref responding after that. Because in the games, you got typical respawn mechanics, and it's also put here, like you die, so you are moving back in time. What is cool, we wanted to not just tell, okay, press restart to replay the level or something like this because you are entering your memories in the get even. So when you are being killed, you are not dying and being uh, magically uh, recovered to life a little bit earlier. When you die, you are rewinding the time to the earlier moment, what is not mechanism, uh, let's say, invented by us, but we are justifying it by the, all this uh, story or memory or time travel things that you are simply moving back to the other moments in the time and you have ability to replay it. But it's just for the small mechanics parts. For the bigger, uh, let's say, events, like huge happenings that was important to you, like, for example, somebody was kidnapped and he died. So you played the part of the game, you were trying to save somebody and then he died. <coughs> so you can try to repeat this whole sequences by simply start again at the same point where you were, but you may also try to move to come some other point in the time and try to do some other change to not make this event to happen. Exactly like in the, <coughs> excuse me, like in the uh, butterfly effect, of course it means that we have some choices and branches. And to be honest, we don't have many choices and branches. There, there is not, no, no like in the Witcher, that for each side story, we got uh, different options of behavior and, and it all affects the later evening. We got some very important choices in the games and each of the choices gives you different elements of some structures later in the game. So if you choose this way, couple of things will be different. If you choose this way, many things may be different. 
you never know at the beginning, but it gives some replayability to the game and it also makes significance of the time loops, like replaying the game makes more meaning than just replaying the game because I want to play it again. Right now I can want to play it again to get a different output. And this is important for, again, intrapersonal conflict, like when I'm fighting with myself about what if I can change my past. Photorealism is important uh, with relation to the question what is real? Because, uh, well, first, uh, photorealism, uh, moving uh, aside all the things related that photorealism may look cool. Because, okay, it may look cool, but this is not what supports the story. What supports the story is that photorealism gives you feeling of the presence and feeling of the immersion. And by feeling of the immersion and, and sense of the presence, you can uh, feel the story a little bit stronger. We believe in it. Of course, it doesn't mean that games with non-realistic uh, graphics cannot make the same. However, for us, the photorealism is a strong element of support of what is real question of questioning the reality and also of, uh, uh, let's say, telling that what could we make to make the player more immersed into the game. And we also get scanner gadgets, maybe probably the most uh, uncritical things, but generally we got some uh, tools in the game, like uh, smartphone application, like some other gadgets that we are using to check if the reality around us is, is the true. If we wake up in some abandoned building and we don't know if this is the reality or if this is a dream of it's the alternate reality or virtual reality, we may use our gadgets to check it. Also, this is part of the gameplay mechanics, like it works cool or we believe there are some cool puzzles related to this. But it's also an element of questioning what is real or asking ourselves if the world we live in are really the true and uh, let's say palpable world. But we got interpersonal conflict as well. So in story, we got two ultimate enemies. Again, it was very important that we didn't want to make the epic game because first, we are a quite small development studio. Second, there is a lot of great epic AAA games about the conflict, including many of the things we want to use in Get Even. So to be on a side to, to, to make something unique, we wanted to create the game that is strictly about two characters. Like, I would say, Spy versus Spy, if you know the Commodore game. Like the movies uh, Old Boy or Face Off. There is a couple of good stories which are focused entirely on two characters and Get Even is to be supposed also about this. It's the story about the revenge. Revenge is the, let's say, key motivation that uh, gives you a lot of adrenaline when you want to grab your enemy and perhaps kill him or do something bad to him. Meaning, by both player motivation but the character's motivations as well, revenge is simply, it's simply the good tool. I would say it's not the most sophisticated. Somebody can say that going into the revenge uh, trope is, is simply going into the shortest way. But the story of Get Even, as you may realize, is already very, very, let's say, twisted and complicated. So for the main motivation, we wanted people to think the game is all about the revenge. Actually, we believe that by playing the whole game, you will find out that this game is not exactly about the revenge. It's about a couple of other things. However, and technically speaking, revenge is one of the main drivers of what's going on in the story. Then we have invading memories. Because, as I mentioned, it's about the, uh, s like the butterfly effect movie again, is or source code, is about ability to enter your own memory. But in fact, in Get Even, and this is the mix of the uh, single player and multiplayer campaign and two opposite campaign, is that you can also invite some other people's memory. This is more like the Inception. In the Inception or in the Matrix, you could enter some, some, some other people's mind and you can do something good or something bad to him. So this is also part of Get Even's story. It's also teaching the lessons because basically, and I mentioned this is not the, just story about the revenge, it's actually then 
again, like similarly in, in the Saw movie, for example, you know the Saw, uh, we are not going into the very dark gore elements, so, so it's not all about this, but the Saw initially and the Jigsaw character was, uh, at least uh, in his heart, he was teaching people the lesson. So at least one of these uh, heroes wants to make the other characters learn somebody. I think I won't have time to, to, to go a little bit deeper how we are going to achieve that. But it is important that this is the teaching by conflict. Like I will smash you in the yeah, I will smash you into the face to make you realize that you won't do this. This is the simplest version and there are more complicated versions of it. Maybe there will be time in the example for the next digital dragons to, to go into this because actually I think it's the most interesting thing about the, the get even structure. And of course, by the revenge, by, by all other things they are doing, they are simply hurting and destroying each other life. What's important? It happens not just in the time of the game. I, I mean, not when you are just into the game. These things are going uh, to show, uh, show their effects. Actually, the game starts, or the moment of the game is when one of them hurt, each other, uh, hurt the second one and this is the source of the conflict, but in the end it appeared that they are both doing some bad things to each other and this is not exactly their goal, but this is some, some, some what is called uh, 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 the tragic conflict in the Polish uh, primary or high schools that even if you don't want to do something bad to the other people, even if you try to get rid of the bad situation, you probably have no options, like the Murphy's Law of the, of the, let's say, intimate storytelling. But in the gameplay, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, uh, let's say, more tricky here, because basically, of course, uh, interpersonal conflict means that we are fighting the, the other guys. So, so there, there is nothing really, let's say, uh, innovative or unique about, okay, we got the guys who are in conflict, so they are fighting each other. Okay, so first thing is uh, pretty obvious. They will be fighting. So we got shooting weapons, we got melee weapons, we, do, we got some special tools or traps to, to fight each other. It's not, not the crucial element of connecting the, this, these two kinds of conflict, like conflict is storytelling, conflict gameplay. What is more important, we got opposite campaigns. We decided a little bit for the uniqueness, a little bit for the general thought about that it could be cool, that we'll make the opposite campaign instead of making the one long campaign or instead to making of separation of multiplayer and single player mode. Not to go into too much of the details, opposite campaigns mean that once we will be playing as the black and we'll see the story of conflict of black with the red. And in the second time, we'll play as the red and we'll see the story of the conflict of red against black. Just to, uh, let's say, uh, make that I'm aware of the question, so why, why to see the same story twice? Oh, so this is not the same story because they are in the actual conflict, like fighting each other, technically fighting each other, only by the part of the game. But there is a huge part of each campaign which is not related to fighting with each other, which is related to solve some problems that the other guy caused to you, which is related to your own story, your own internal, intrapersonal or internal conflict that you need to solve. So there are just part of the uh, campaigns where they are interacting with each other, but the gameplay mechanics are different on both uh, campaigns. Like on the other campaign you got this kind of weapons, on the other campaigns you got this kind of the weapons. In these levels, one player is using melee combat, second player is not fighting at all, and so on. We got very asymmetrical campaigns uh, looking on what they are doing in the same moment and what story outputs they are getting from uh, each encounter. So we got this multiplayer and single player mix done for a couple of reasons. It's also, I believe, one of our selling points, like uh, there was not too many of games like this or maybe not even one game exactly like this, but it's also a very strong element of supporting the complex. What is also worth to note, we have uh, put much, much more focus on the one-on-one -on -one fighting com uh, techniques than on any other mechanics in the game. What does mean one-on-one? -on -one? 
in typical first person shooter you usually have more something like a kind of shooting gallery you got weapon and you got plenty of enemies like this is me and you are my enemies and i'm shooting all of you uh, from my super gun this is typical uh, typical let's say first person shooter experience so here we are more focusing like you won't have many enemies in the game and even if you have more enemies in certain landscape or certain level the one of them is the most important because the one of them is being controlled by the other player and he is the red meaning your ultimate enemy so the other guys are just like fillers and this one guy is very important and there is a lot of things in game mechanics related to this we are also having melee fight melee fight means uh, fight with non-shooting weapons and again it means that you feel that your enemy is close to you your enemy is just in front of you you see his face you hear his voice it's not just like they are uh, popping random moles uh, which are uh, jumping out from the covers this is also possible and it also happens but there is a lot of sequences when the only way to fight your enemy is by using the melee fight when you uh, directly feel the breath of your enemy on you it also means that we are making something like ultimate uh, I would say uh, personal conflict or conflict of two uh, very uh, two very close persons we got also some uh, technique called mind rec points and it, it we don't have time to, to, to talk much about this but generally and uh, this, this should be enough for today mind break points is being collected by doing some bad things to your enemy and when you do some bad things to your enemy you got enough mind break points to break some of his memories and to go deeper into into your ability to dig his another memories so it's something like leveling leveling the ability to crush your enemy's mind again this is not some uh, stamina or experience points or whatever like this they, these are co being called mind break points because we are breaking the mind of the other player or, or, or the our enemy to be able to go a little bit deeper inside his mind again story conflict uh, support we got hostile environments meaning that well maybe it, it wasn't uh, made exactly uh, as a supportive role for for the conflict it just appeared it really works because uh, by hostile environment meaning abandoned asylum meaning abandoned industry uh, facilities meaning some dirty streets filled with junkies or, or, or drug dealers in this hostile environment of course the conflict is the first things that comes into our mind because we are being threatened by different things all around the time and we got also puzzles that again don't have time today today to describe a little bit more but the puzzles are related also to breaking into the other guy's mind I mean to break into the other guy's mind to enter his memory we need to solve some puzzles so again these are puzzles but these are not puzzles to get the treasure these are not puzzles to get the armor these are puzzles to get in inside the other person head and to make him probably suffer or to get something uh, else from him and that would be all we could talk much more and especially I think uh, it will be good to, to, to uh, next time at the next Digital Dragons when we'll be right before the launch of Get Even we'll show you gameplay that, that let's say describes all of these mechanics right now we are playing the uh, show of the gameplay of Get Even at the Gamescom in uh, August this year and before I just wanted to tell that uh, we are still looking for the experienced people from the industry to join our team especially programmers also level designers and artists so if any of you is uh, in search of the new job I would strongly recommend to contact me after the show and right now uh, let me know if there are any questions about today's lecture so thank you very much for your time thank you very much Wojciech